Welcome to Mastering Solutions. The problem gives us a velocity versus time graph for this bug, they say a green leaf hopper, and they want us to figure out what the acceleration is and how far it jumps during the phase. Now, they say that it's an interesting bug because it jumps with nearly constant acceleration. So you can see in the graph, it's essentially all just a straight line. So what we would be using for this is what's called a line of best fit. So we could go start right here and go pretty much straight through. Putting that line straight through, you can see essentially approximates all of the points to give us the slope of the line. So to get the acceleration from a velocity versus a time graph, we find the slope of this line, which will tell us the acceleration. Now it does that because the acceleration, you can remember that the formula is the change in the velocity over the change in the time. Well, what's the chain, uh, the formula for a slope? It's rise over run, right? Well, what is the rise? It's the change in the y or velocity. And the change in the run on the bottom is a change in time. So you can see why this velocity versus time graph, the slope gives us the acceleration. So now we can break this up into the final minus initial, which is of course, anything delta is always final minus initial. So now the time, same thing, t final minus t initial. And now we can plug in the values from the graph. So the velocity final, if we look, it's basically at 0.9 meters per second. So we have 0 0.9 meters per second, and we'll subtract the initial, which is zero. And now that will be divided by the time, which is five milliseconds, or writing that differently, five times 10 to the negative three seconds, so it's in standard units. And then initially it was at zero times 10 to the negative three seconds. So of course, if you look at this, we can simplify and just get rid of both of these. So that will give us 0 0.9 meters per second divided by five times 10 to the negative three seconds. So if you look at the units, we have meters per second divided by seconds, which is the same as saying meters per second squared. So we can be confident that we did the math correctly because the double check of the units confirmed that, yeah, we're going to get the right equation for acceleration. So if we have 0.9 divided by 5 times 10 to the negative 3 gives us an acceleration of 180 meters per second squared. So that's our answer for part A. And now if the question asks to put that into scientific notation, we can do that pretty quickly. We're going to move the decimal place 1, 2, so that would be 1.8. And then it's time 10 to the 2 meters per second squared. So if they ask in scientific notation, that is what you would put in there. So now let's move on to part B. This was A. And for part B, they say, how far did it move during that phase of the jump? And so we're looking at the exact same numbers, but now we have to use a kinematic equation to do that. So we'll be using y final is equal to y initial plus v initial times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. Now we're going to use this one because we want to figure out what is the distance that it moved, and it's a vertical jump, so we want to find it in the y direction. We have all of the variables for this equation and what we're trying to solve for, but we can go through and simplify this a little bit further. We know that the y initial is zero, so that we can cancel. The initial velocity is also zero, so this whole unit will cancel. So we're left with y final is equal to one half times the acceleration times the time squared. Now, if you go through a lot of the problems, you see that this is a very common equation that we use over and over. And so this is a pattern that you can see, and it's a really good one to master because this will likely show up on your test. So now when we plug in our numbers, we have y final is equal to one half of the acceleration, which is, we just solved for is 180 meters per second squared times the time, which we said was five times 10 to the negative three seconds, and we'll square that whole value. So we have 0 0.5 times 180 times five times 10 to the negative three squared. So we have 0 0.00225, 0 0.00225, and what is that gonna be? It's the y final, so that will be in meters. 
looking at the units as a double check, we have meters per second squared times seconds squared. So the second squares cancels, leaving us with meters over one, or in other words, meters. So we can put this into scientific notation because this is kind of a weird way to read the answer, a little bit confusing. So if we move the decimal place one, two, three, we'll have two point and rounded, we'll say three times 10 to the negative three meters, or we could also say 2.3 millimeters. So these are your answers. However they ask for, it's all the same, either 0 0.00225 meters or 2.3 times 10 to the negative three meters or 2.3 millimeters. It's all saying the same thing, but you do need to make sure for mastering physics to put it in how they ask for it.